You guys, this is my leak. This is the podcast. And I am back with a listener letter. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy the listener letter. So if you want me to take a stab at something, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Um, all right. So today the listener says, I have a question for you, or maybe a few. How do you know when it's time to keep going and when it's time to let go? I have been in a season of taking back-to-back losses that I know stem from spiritual attacks that are trying to stop me from walking out my purpose. For the last few months, I've kept going and kept going and kept going. I'm the resident strong friend. I'm the oldest daughter. I'm the one everyone relies on for positivity, encouragement, and to get a prayer through. But the way that life has been lifing, I am tired. I'm exhausted, actually. In July, I was passive aggressively removed from a leadership position at church, only to be unexpectedly let go from my job a month later. I was set up by two older black women who falsified my performance report to get rid of me. Since I was hired as a contractor, I couldn't get unemployment and I was out of work for the next two months while being unpaid for two and a half months. Now that I'm working again, trying to catch up is exhausting and seems almost impossible. I am now facing eviction. And when my mom asked me yesterday what I wanted her to pray for me, I said, I didn't know. I've been praying for God to save me from everything falling apart. But what if it's his will for it to all fall apart? What if it needs to all fall apart in order for my life to come together in a better way? How do you know when to stop trying to make everything work and when to say, I've done all I can, let go and let the chips fall where they may? I don't want to be the strong one all of the time. I don't know how much more I can take. So I got this email um, and it had been some time that passed before I actually got a chance to, to get to it, to potentially take a stab at it. So I just wrote her a note for an update and I got this update. I am doing okay. Things haven't quite come back together yet, but I feel good within myself. I have been standing on my faith and I feel content as God starts to rebuild the pieces of my life. In terms of how this ended up going... I decided to stop trying to save everything from falling apart and decided to let it fall apart. I used the little bit of hope I had to trust that God would create a new foundation for this next chapter of my life and whatever needed to go could go and whatever needed to stay could stay. I've learned to surrender to his lead and plan for my life at a greater level, even when I don't know what it is. I am now staying with a friend while getting back on top of things financially until I find out if my work contract will get renewed for the next year. It is very possible that things needed to fall apart for me to become a better version of myself and for things to begin to come back together better. I don't know what's next, but I'm excited about this next chapter and the new beginnings it will bring. All right, so... There were many things in these two letters that I felt called to. So we will just address them one by one. Pulling out the questions, we have two different versions of the same thing. And so I want to call them out, but we're not going to get to these until the end of this podcast. But the questions were, how do you know when it's time to keep going and when it's time to let go? And how do you know when to stop trying to make everything work? And when to say, I've done all I can, let go and let the chips fall where they may. Two, ri- two words ring for me as I read this. Transition and transformation. These are life transitions. What is a life transition by definition? Life transitions involve significant changes in roles, responsibilities, and routines requiring you to adapt to new circumstances. Transitions can be positive, such as the birth of a child, or negative, such as the loss of a job. There are a variety of ways to cope with life transitions. Having a support system and keeping your self-care intact are just two starting points for coping with these major life changes. Now, 
according to sources. And I have, uh, I have another way to address this, but we're going to talk about the three types of life transitions, anticipated, the ones we plan for unanticipated, the things that catch us by surprise without a plan in place and non-event. So something that you anticipated that didn't come to pass, which still changes your roles, routines, and assumptions like not having children when you had always planned to, or never marrying or being partnered despite having anticipated doing so. Some more examples of life transitions are reaching a significant age, whatever that age is that matters to you, moving in with a romantic partner, having a child, getting a promotion at work, moving to a new area, getting divorced, going to college, the loss of a family member or someone close to you, health challenges, losing a job, getting retired, becoming an empty nester. These are all examples of life transitions. There are many that I can't even probably think of um, at this moment. But in the case of this email, being removed from the position at church and losing your job will qualify as a few of your life's transitions. Now, What's really special about these transitions is that they are opportunities for transformation. Life transformations are profound changes that alter the essence of your life, values, beliefs, or self-perception. Ken Nelson, um, teacher, says, transformation is the process of getting to know your default story and loosening your grip. I have more of this, but I just want to say the process is what really sticks out to me of getting to know your default story. What is your default story? What is the story that you tell often about many things? Is this your everybody eventually leaves story? Is this your I'm always the strong friend story. Is this your nobody knows how to pray for me story? Whatever it is, what is your default story? Get it to know it. Start to take notes. What do you tell all the time? It's tight. And now transformation is going to be you loosening the grip on that default story, getting some distance from it. And you begin to see the limitations of any story, our stories limit us. And you find the courage to step out of habitual ways of interpreting experience. These are habits. This is the way we interpret what is happening in our lives. And when we're able to to transform or take advantage of this opportunity, your sense of identity, who you are, gets bigger, broader, and more inclusive. Now, you become less identified with pleasant and unpleasant reactions. You become less identified with pleasant and unpleasant reactions, less caught up in the past or future or needing to make things happen, There is an underlying joy and peace that can be known that doesn't end. When you can practice being yourself and going beyond a limiting story, Ken says, you can create the conditions for transformation and begin walking a path of freedom. And that's what we're trying to do here today, listener. And all of you, we are taking advantage of these conditions to transform and begin walking on our path of freedom. Life has a way of getting our attention. And during these transitions, we are invited to transform. You can decide to transform during a life transition. And how would you do that? Some ideas, reflect, open, honest, real reflection, evaluation, really taking stock. And even if it's as simple as figuring out what is the story I tell when anything happens to me, positive or negative, you know, breaking patterns, you're going to start to notice some patterns. One that I find to be really helpful when we get knocked off our square is to develop a routine. So 
a recent life transition, major life transition for me was closing my company, my mother dying, and just not having the day-to-day movement like I had with my company where I got up, I had emails, I had calls, do this, do that, put out fire, put out fire, put out fire. You know, I had to develop a routine over this last year and it could be like a daily ritual, something that I just got up and I did every day, a morning walk, getting good sleep, um, putting a routine in place, making your lunch, doing things in order helps you establish some consistency and sort of grounds you again. Check your self-talk. Watch how you talk about yourself. If you wouldn't let a friend talk to themselves then that way, or you wouldn't let somebody else talk to you like that, check your self-talk, set some intentions for this next season, which listener you have already begun to do. Set some intentions, seek support, which you have staying with a friend, find a role model and lots and lots of self-compassion. If you need help with self-compassion, self-compassion self-compassion.org. I believe her name is Kristen Neff. Uh, She really does a deep dive into self-compassion and I have found her work valuable, helpful um, at various points, but I I love it. So now we got to fact check this letter. You said, I have been a season of taking back-to-back losses that I know stem from spiritual attacks that are trying to stop me from walking out my purpose. Can you prove this is true, listener? Can you prove that these life transitions stem from spiritual attacks trying to stop you from walking out your purpose? How does believing something that is this difficult to prove impact your life? How can you poke holes at this story and stay focused on what you know? This next one is tricky because I wasn't there, but it's something we need to put through the fact checker. I was set up by two older black women who falsified my performance report in order to get rid of me. I don't know. And I wasn't there. And I believe you were passive, passive aggressively removed from your position at the church. The setup and falsified performance report are worth an investigation. Is this true? Can we prove this? Are, is there anything true on the performance report? This doesn't make you a bad person. It could simply mean that your performance led to removal, albeit passive aggressive. I don't know, but I want to invite you to fact check this because when we get tangled up with our stories and live our lives according to these beliefs, They impact how we show up to so many things. And this, this story, these stories don't deserve to own your life. Now I want to get back to your questions. How do you know when it's time to keep going and when it's time to let go? How do you know when to stop trying to make everything work? And when I say I've done all I can let go and let the chips fall where they may. The question is tricky because it's vague. Keep going on what? Let go of who or what? It's time to let go of the stories of back-to-back losses and spiritual attacks because those stories will hold you back. You keep going toward transformation. You keep reflecting, evaluating, and breaking patterns. You stay steady with your routine, morning walks, good sleep, finding more ways to be consistent. You keep checking your self-talk and setting intentions. You keep getting support like you're doing with your friend. You keep seeking support and looking for a role model. You've done all that you know how to do. And now it's time to apply this additional learning things that we've discussed to your life. Now, when I think about change And the change cycle and one of my favorite books of the year has been Martha Beck's. I think it's the way of integrity. Now she says there are four types of change. We talked about three types of change earlier, but she says there's four. Sorry, y'all. She says there's want it necessary change. I have to change and I don't want to. She said, when you have that type of change, you use passion as your instrument of change. 
wanted, but not necessary. I don't have to change, but I want to use play as your instrument of change. Unwanted, necessary, where you are right now. I don't want to change, but I have to. She says, purpose is your instrument of change and unwanted, not necessary. I don't want to change and I don't have to use peace as your instrument of change. This is unwanted, necessary change and purpose is your instrument. What do you want from the world? What are your core values? What are you passionate about? How do these things drive your goals? How do you answer those questions and create your guiding principle, your personal North Star? What is your direction, listener? Your purpose. What things energize you? Where does your natural ability lie? What impact do you have on others? How do, we, how do you ensure your actions continue to line up with your beliefs? That is where you keep going. Until next time, I am at my leak everywhere on the interwebs, even my leak.com or my taught you.com. If you'd like to write me a letter, you know, I love hearing from you just, Hey, at my taught you.com H E Y, or just use the form on my site until next time. Bye-bye.